Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. Your Valor Rank signifies how much you've played player versus player content in Star Wars The Old Republic, and the higher your Valor Rank, the more player versus player rewards you have access to. In this video, we'll be going over how to earn Valor, the rates you can earn it at, and all the rewards you can get. Near the game's launch, your Valor Rank would help you access the highest tiers of PvP gear, but these days, it's purely for cosmetic rewards, bragging rights, and to show your love of PvP content. As you play player vs player matches, you'll earn medals for performing well, and for each medal you earn, you'll get Valor Points. You'll also get extra Valor Points if your team members give you an MVP Most Valuable Player vote at the end of a match. On top of that, you get a big chunk of Valor Points just for completing a match, and even if you lose and got no medals, you'll probably get at least 2,000 Valor Points per match. If you want to earn extra Valor, you can purchase a minor or major Valor Boost item from the Cartel Market or the GTN with credits from other players, which will boost your Valor gain by 25%. You can also get a chance to earn Valor quick during some limited time double XP events and double rewards events that take place randomly throughout the year. If you want to see a list of the different type of medals that you can earn in PvP matches, I've got an updated list in a link in the description of this video. When players find a Valor reward they like, they often start asking how many matches or how long will it take them to reach that point. Players most often ask how long it will take them to reach level 60, which is the rank you need to wear some of the old crafted cosmetic armor, and how long it will take to get to Valor rank 100, as there's a new Steam achievement offered at that rank. At the time of making this video, on a max level character, you'll earn approximately 3,000 Valor points per match. During double rewards events, and with using a Valor boost, you can easily reach over 8,000 points per match if you do well and get a lot of medals. The early Valor levels only require a few thousand points each, and completing your first match will likely push you through a good chunk of the early Valor levels. However, the later levels start increasing sharply in how many points you need to complete them. For example, almost every level before Valor level 50 requires about 1-2 to two matches per rank, but after that it starts going up very steeply. To give some more context, just going from Valor rank 99 to 100 will take you longer than going all the way from Valor rank 1 to Valor rank 50. I wanted to find out how many matches it would take me to get to my goal, so I've made a spreadsheet that will help you calculate how many Valor points you need to get to your goal, and there's a little calculator at the bottom that will help you estimate how many matches you'll need to play to get there, and about how many hours of PvP you'll have to play. It's linked in the description of this video as well. To use the spreadsheet, open up the link, and then you'll first need to go to File, Make a Copy. And then on your copy, delete all the rows of Valor ranks you already have. So if you're Valor 14, delete rows 1 through 14. Then delete the rows after your goal. If you want to reach Valor 60, delete rows 61 through 100. If you wanted to also factor in how many points you currently have, especially if you're in the later levels, which take much longer, type in the current Valor points in the middle columns row. The bottom of the sheet will then tell you the total you need to earn in Valor Points, and if you type in on average how many points you personally earn per match, it will tell you how many matches it will take you to reach your goal, and a rough estimate of how many hours you would spend in PvP getting there. The biggest rewards for leveling up your Valor, apart from bragging rights, is the titles you can display on your character. You get a title for each 10 Valor levels you earn, and there's a matching achievement of the same name in the Legacy advancement valor section of your achievements. So the titles go Skirmisher, Duelist, Gladiator, Centurion, Champion, Battlemaster, War Hero, Conqueror, Warlord, and the Coveted Elite Warlord for Valor rank 100. In addition to the titles, as you rank up in Valor, you'll also get access to the PvP Crystal Vendor, a few cosmetic items, and a vendor that sells cosmetic weapons. At Valor rank 10, you'll have access to a vendor that sells a bunch of different color crystals. In the past, these crystals offered a PvP specific advantage, but now they're all pretty much identical to the crystals that can be crafted. The colors that are offered are most of the crafted color crystals along with the four original black core earnable crystals. They each cost between 150,000 to 300,000 credits in addition to Valor rank 10, so you'll definitely want to compare these in price with the crystals you can find on the GTN before buying them. 
So the colors available are basic orange, green, red, blue, yellow. There's the crafted, but also available from PVP, fire red, purple core, amethyst, white, yellow, orange, and white, purple, blue. And lastly, there's black, orange, black, purple, black, red, and black, blue, which you could get from operations. There's also two mounts available, the Ubrikian War Rider and the Longspur Recon. Both require Valor Rank 23. The Longspur Recon costs 50,000 credits and the Ubrikian War Rider costs 100,000 credits. In addition to those mounts, there's also two pets you can get through PvP, as well as a few other ways. The Lobelisk pet is purchasable at Valor Rank 5 for 20,000 credits and the Loggerful can be bought at Valor 12 also for 20,000 credits. The PvP Valor weapons are one of the most interesting rewards in my opinion. Unlike many other weapons in the game, they are moddable, which means you can upgrade them as much as you want and use them as part of your max level gear if you like the way they look and sound. They each cost 90,000 credits and each one requires a different level and Valor level to purchase, ranging from Valor rank 2 up to Valor rank 46. There's different weapons offered Republic and Imperial side, and unfortunately, since they're not legacy bound, you cannot buy one of the Imperial ones and send it over to your Republic character. You're stuck with what's available on your faction. Just so we're on the same page though, there's no such thing as true PvP or PvE weapons or armor. You can easily get one of these and take it into whatever your favorite type of content is. They're mostly just cosmetic. So that covers the main Valor rewards available in the game, but I wanted to show you something interesting. The PvP Battlemaster armor sets are an interesting relic from the past that can often still be found on the player market, the GTN. The Battlemaster sets were originally available near the launch of the game, and players who were actively playing PvP back then could get these sets and also learn how to craft them through schematics. Unfortunately, those schematics are no longer available, but there are still many crafters in the game who can still craft those special armors, and if you look for them over time, you'll be able to find them on the GTN as crafters list them up. If you're looking for a full set, and not just a chest piece, if you see a crafter selling one piece on the GTN but not the rest, send them a mail and ask them if they'd be willing to craft you a full armor set as they often only list the chest pieces or helmets as they are more likely to sell. These Battlemaster sets can be bought or crafted by a crafter on either faction, but they change appearance when sent over to the opposite faction. These sets require Valor Rank 60 to equip, even in the outfit designer. Much like the Battlemaster sets, there's also some old crafted armors called War Hero that require Valor Level 70 to equip, even in the outfit designer. These sets have two versions, the rated in brackets and the unrated versions. The rated versions are a different color and don't have any valor requirements, so they're very easy to get as long as you can find a crafted version on the GTN. The unrated versions are a different color and do require valor level 70. Just like the Battlemaster armors, you'll need to track down a player who can craft these or find them on the GTN. Heads up, I've also seen some weird things happen when you try and slot these into the outfit designer, including them turning all black in color instead of retaining their main color, though using a dye does give the expected dye color. This might happen with the Battlemaster sets too, but I didn't test it out. And lastly, it's not quite a reward, but more of a requirement. If you want to do the competitive player versus player content in Star Wars The Old Republic called Ranked PvP, you will need Valor 25 before you're allowed to jump in. And that's it. That's pretty much every reward you get for Valor and how Valor works in Star Wars The Old Republic. If you wanted to see a huge list and screenshots of all those weapons and all those armors, take a look at the link in this description of this video and there's a full screenshot list there. Have fun in PvP and good luck raising your Valor level. If you want to show your support for this series, or you want to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. May the Force be with you.